hook it, and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today, we're cooking blackened snapper with a delicious sauce. And Chef Amanda Irwin from the Island View Casino is here to show you how to do it at home. But before we cook it, we gotta hook it. Catching snapper is always fun. And while the season is short, there now seem to be plenty of them. Over the years, we've caught lots of snapper on our sport fish boat, Vixen. In fact, both my wife and daughter have broken world records. My wife broke her world record only to have her, our daughter, Brittany, break the same record. And not only did she break her record, but she broke two records with one fish. She got the junior angler world record as well as the ladies world record in her class. Not too bad. Generally, we fish with cut bait in 100 feet of water, and most of the time, if you don't have a bite within the first few seconds, it's because the crafty devils have stolen your bait. In fact, the snapper is so thick, oftentimes we have difficulty catching other species, such as grouper or maybe triggerfish. But on one such trip, we did pretty good with my daughter Brittany and her friend Louise. Hey ladies, drop your lines. Since snapper were not in season, we were fishing for amberjack. Of course, no one had told the snapper that they weren't in season, so we caught plenty of them. And while we had to throw them back, it was a lot of fun fighting them beforehand. The use of circle hooks is now required when fishing for a reef fish. And while it takes some getting used to, the great part is that when you catch fish using circle hooks, normally they're hooked in the mouth, and so it's easy to release them without harming the fish. The main trick in fishing with circle hooks is not to jerk to set the hook like you would with the old J hooks. What we generally do is just start lowering the rod and then start cranking in. And pretty soon you feel the pull and the fish is hooked up. All right, we've caught our red snapper. They sure are fun to catch. Now we're gonna learn how to season it and then make a great sauce to complement it. And that's on medium heat, so you wanna keep the yeah. heat kinda low when you're doing that. Yeah, because otherwise your flour, if, you, if your heat's up too high, your flour will burn and then you'll have black specks in there and that, that doesn't taste good. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Chef Amanda Irwin from the Island View Casino is going to show us how to season the fish, and after that, she'll show us the secret to her sauce. Well, Amanda, I see we've got some great looking red snapper here, and I understand you're going to blacken it, so yep. how do we get started? Um, I just I, like you said, it's red, it's this red snapper. I, I brought you a piece with the skin on it, just so you can see that it's called red snapper because the snapper is, the skin is red. And because I know there's a lot of different kinds of snapper, especially around here. But so but you see the skin is red, but the, the flesh on the other side is kind of a pinkish color. Mm -hmm. And when you cook it, it's gonna turn white and really flaky. I like red snapper because it's not a super fishy tasting fish. Mm -hmm. um, it's really mild, which a lot of people do, don't like real fishy fish, but this one is, it's, it's, a, it's got a nice flavor. Now you caught this one this morning, right? You personally? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. No, not much of a fisherman myself, but all right. I'm all pretty right. good at cooking it. That's all that matters. Well, that's, right? all, that's that's all that matters <laughs> to us. So to prepare the fish, oh, you know, put put a little bit of oil on it just so your seasoning could, will stick to it. Any particular type of oil? Just olive oil. Uh, or? Th this is vegetable oil, vegetable, but you can okay. use olive oil. You can use um, whatever you have at home. Then I just like to. Depending on how spicy you like it, you can season however. If you like it real spicy, you can go real heavy. If you don't like it so much, not so much. Um, this dish actually, if you don't like blackened seasoning, you can just put salt and pepper and grill it that way. And then, because I know a lot of people with the spice don't like spice so much, but. Well, is, is Paul Perdone pretty, pretty powerful or is it? Uh, Paul Perdone is pretty powerful. It's um, got a bunch of cayenne and a whole bunch of other things in there, but so. But yeah, it's pretty spicy. Okay. But, All right, we've got right. that ready. We got that going. And then once you see your season your fish and everything, you can go ahead and put it aside and then come over here to okay. your to your saute pan. Which one it is. So. <laughs> uh, I put it about medium so you're not burnt you don't burn too too much too fast. Okay. Grab that spatula. All right, spatula. <laughs> yeah. 
All just right. gonna start with about a tablespoon of butter. But go ahead and let the butter melt. Um, if you need to turn it about medium, medium high, but you don't want it mm -hmm. on high because uh, you don't want the scorch. You don't want to scorch your veggies and get that burnt flavor in your sauce. Once your butter's melted, you're gonna go ahead and add all your veggies in. Um, and what we have here is um, some diced onions, some diced green bell pepper. Okay. This is diced celery. All right. And I will let that cook a little, little bit by itself before you put the garlic or the mushrooms in, because they're your your garlic and your mushrooms are gonna take less time to cook than all those. So you're gonna want kind of let that cook for a couple minutes till you're almost translucent. Oh, that's fresh garlic that you Yeah, this is minced? this okay. is a minced garlic that I did. It's probably about the equivalent of maybe two cloves or so. Yep, so once they start getting a little translucent, you can go ahead and add, add your garlic. Okay. All right. And then this is probably about half a cup of sliced button mushrooms. Okay, nothing special, it's regular old mushrooms. Right? Yep, regular old mushrooms. Uh, we use button, but I mean, you can use whatever you enjoy. And then once once your veggies cook down a little bit and you can see your mushrooms are starting to cook, lose a little, uh, little moisture, and you're gonna add about a cup of white wine, and then you wanna bring that up to a boil and reduce it. You can turn it up a little bit. Okay. All right, that looks about, re about reduced about halfway, so then you're just gonna add your the shrimp stock, and this will give you, um, as you'll see we don't really add a lot of salt to this dish because because I used the base, the base is gonna have a uh, more salty flavor. Oh, okay, okay. So, so that was about a cup and a half of that. And then we put about a cup of heavy cream in there. And uh, we'd probably be all right. And this, you don't have to be careful with it curdling or anything? Or? Um, as long as you're stirring it when you're adding it, you, you, you'll be okay. But you want it to reduce a little bit because it'll help thicken your sauce. Okay. And then I, I season it here. This is a little a dry thyme and blackened seasoning. Mm -hmm. And just like I said, you can adjust it to however, however spicy or not spicy you like it. Whatever temperature you like, huh? Yes. Okay. That has a little like pinkish tint, tinge to it too. Yep, know? it will. I was gonna have some a little bit of hot sauce. You gotta have that, of course, and Worcestershire because that's what in all cooking in the South has, definitely has <laughs> Worcestershire and hot sauce in it. So you can just cut, add a couple dashes here of each of those. All righty. And these, like I said, these will also add the salty flavor. So we don't really. That's why we don't add a lot of salt to this particularly. And while this is heating up, we need to make a. Just a little bit of roux to thicken our to thicken it up. This is about a stick of butter, which is okay. So the for the roux, you're just gonna melt your butter. And I like to whisk. It's is to it whisk. salted, unsalted butter? Does it matter? Or? Um, it doesn't really matter. I usually use unsalted because it doesn't add because you can control how much salt you're eating a little better. And like I said, this sauce here is starting to boil, so we're gonna turn it down. Make sure the okay. right one. Make sure, so we don't boil over and make a mess because nobody likes to clean up a heavy cream mess. <laughs> yeah. And that's just regular flour, nothing special there? Yeah, no, this is just all-purpose flour. Um, it just helps bind the sauce together and it'll thicken it up. All right, once your butter, for the roux back here, once your butter's melted, you just want to stir in your flour. Um, okay. You want to make a paste. You want to make sure you get a paste. I always like to add just half the flour first and then see if I need to add more because you don't you want control to control it and not it's get too thick. To control yeah. that way. How long does it usually take to cook that? Um, it doesn't take long at all. Like it's like as you can see, I just melted the butter and once we get the flour, rest of the flour stirred in, you're not really cooking it too long because like I said, we're, we want to leave it as a blonde roux, which means it's not going to have any of that brown color. And that's on medium heat, so you want to keep the yeah. heat kind of low when you're doing that. Yeah, because otherwise your flour, if, you, if your heat's up too high, your flour will burn and then you'll have black specks in there. And that, that doesn't taste good. And there we go, let's see. That's, that's all you need to do to get, get, get that going. When we return, it's all coming together. Chef Amanda heats up the stove to blacken our snapper, and then we'll go on to make our Bienville sauce. So. 
out. And you don't want to overcook fish because it'll dry out real right, fast. Right, right. So. Lose a lot of flavor. So you just keep an eye on it. But, I mean, it looks, looks good to me. Let's get back to the kitchen with Chef Amanda. We're going to risk in our roux to finish up the Bienville sauce, and then we're firing up the stove. All right, that's well, looking good. And then, as long as you're, as long as you're boiling over here, on, on with this, you can go ahead and whisk in your roux. It's easier to whisk because it, it'll break up the, um, it'll break up the flour clumps a little better. Then you just whisk oh, in till you like the consistency. Mm -hmm. um, you, just, you just want it thick enough so it's not really soupy on the plate. So you just add a little at a time yeah, to get just, it where you want it. Yep, you don't want to, because if you just dump it all in there, it's easier to, to add more right. than to Control take it out. Right, control it. Yeah. Definitely. And I think we definitely won't even need all this that I made. Doesn't look like. You've done this before, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, once or twice. Um, if you do happen to get it a little bit too thick, like this might be a little bit too thick, all you have to, you can, you can, we can fix that. Okay. All you can do is, you got your heavy add cream. cream. Okay. You can just add a little bit more heavy cream. And just whisk that in and it'll thin it out a little bit. And we're just going to turn it down because we're all pretty much done with it. I tried that trick one time making margaritas and we kept adjusting all evening to the fact that uh, <laughs> we finally thought we had it just right. I'm not so sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that's looking good. Boy, that's perfect. Cream. And then once you're thickened up, we're going to add, we got to put shrimp in there. <laughs> of course. And you can, you can do this, um, you can just put, we put the raw shrimp in there and it'll cook in the sauce. Because then you'll also get the the, the flavor All the from, flavors the, in from the okay. from the cooking. So you just want to make sure you got it about medium. Okay. And then you just want to stir your shrimp in, and you can we can let this cook while we get our fish going on the grill. Okay. And you're gonna know this. There's your shrimp are done. They'll they'll turn pink, and they won't be clear anymore. And then you'll know your shrimp are done. And you don't want to cook those on because they get tough if you yeah, too and long you don't right cook them, you don't want to cook them too long. So okay, go. all righty. So we can let this go. We can just okay. let this. All right, I'll set that over there. there. We can leave this on. We leave, leave this on about medium, medium to medium low, to go, so we can. Uh, it'll simmer a little bit, and we can get the shrimp cooked. Okay. And then we can throw the fish on the grill. All right. <laughs> So we had our fish that we did earlier. Um, I know she put it on there and let it sit for a while. Is that important, or is it just uh, it doesn't matter? It's not really important. It's just I just like to do it to get ahead, to get ahead, and okay, make sure yeah. we're done. We got it ready. Uh, when you grill fish, the mo one of the very important things about grilling fish is you need to make sure your grill's hot before you put the fish on there, because fish tends to stick to the to the grill a lot. So is you just make sure. You got it. You got it going early, okay. so that it'll be nice and hot. And then, also, I use this is just um, cooking spray. You can use cooking spray, or you can just use olive oil, whatever you want to season. To lubricate your, it. Just to season your grill up with this little uh, little flame. <laughs> don't try that at home. Yeah, don't try that at home. Um, so then, all you're gonna do is just take your fish. Okay. I like to put the show side down first, just so it looks prettier. But you don't have to. Get the, get the grill marks on there. Yeah, and it, it, uh, red snapper is not really thick or anything, so it's not going to take too long to cook. It right. probably, probably about five minutes on each side, maybe. And you'll know it's done, just like shrimp and everything. You'll know it's done when it's, uh, when it turns white and it's mm -hmm. real flaky. You start to see the white around the, yeah, you'll before see. you flip it. Is mm -hmm. that what you wait for? Okay. Yeah, and you don't want to you don't want to play with it too much because you you know you're trying to make it look pretty and all that. So and you want to make up, sure. Yeah. Yeah, and then it'll break up and all that. All righty. And while you're while you're finishing your your fish is finishing grilling, um, we we can go ahead and finish up this sauce. Those shrimp look like they're done to me. So yeah, they do. They we don't want to cook them too much. Nice and pink. Um, just for a little bit extra flavor, I like to squeeze about half a lemon in there. Um, okay. We have these nifty things. They're they're just a it's like cheesecloth with a 
with elastic on it so we don't get any seeds in anything. Looks like little lemon shower caps. As yeah, well. pretty much. So this is a little bit of the lemon flavor because the acid's good with, pairs well with your fish. Okay. And then I just, just a little bit of Parmesan cheese. Just every, everyone likes cheese, oh, right? Oh yeah, you kind of like that, <laughs> absolutely. So we'll just stir that until it melts. Okay. Boy, that's looking great. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it smells good. Alrighty. And then this is just a little bit of fresh chopped parsley, uh, just for a little bit of color and make sure you put it in at the end because if you put it in before then, it'll lose its color. It'll start turning a little bit of that uh, olive color. You, you want it to look nice, so you just add it right at the end. Right at the end, so and, it don't overcook. And you can use dry, but I always find fresh has a little bit better, fresher flavor. It's just a little bit for color. Oh and yeah, that's, that looks, that's about done with that. That looks very nice. <laughs> All right. And then like like um, usually when we when I make it, I usually add a little bit more hot sauce, so it's got a little bit of different color. But you know, if if yours is a little bit orange or more orange than that, that's okay. That's just the way you, the way you seasoned it. The because <clears> if you add more hot sauce, some more Worcestershire, more blackening seasoning, it'll change the color up a little bit. Well, that color looks just fine to me. I can tell you that. It looks, it looks great. Yeah. yeah, it does. And then, so that's done. We're done with that. All right. Turn this off. The fish looks like it's getting yep, there. Yep, and huh? that fish looks like it's done too. So, so once you can just uh, check your fish a little bit, you can you can feel how firm it is. Um, de mm -hmm. You know, depending on how it was, and then it'll fl once it's done, it'll flake. It'll start to flake, yeah. Yeah. So. Looks, it's starting to look like it's mm -hmm. getting nice, nice and flaky. So, and you don't want to overcook fish because it'll dry out real right, fast. Right, right, so, lose a lot of flavor. So you just keep an eye on it, but I mean, it looks, <laughs> looks good to me. When we come back, Chef Amanda puts it on the plate and I can't wait. Yeah. You got the little bite of the pulper domes, and, mm -hmm. but the sauce kind of evens it out. That is, that is excellent. Yeah, that's good. You create a masterpiece, man. I think she's <laughs> going to get a, a golden fork or a golden hook in this case. <laughs> Good. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Well, we made our blackened snapper with the Bienville sauce, and I think I hear my stomach growling. Okay, now this is my personal favorite <laughs> part of all, and this looks outstanding. So, if you were serving this at home, what would you do for sides with, with this? Um, probably a nice ri rice would go good, like a rice peel off, because you can mix it in with the sauce and mm -hmm. it would give you that nice creamy rice um, would probably be your best bet, but you can do uh, boiled potatoes or, you know, a little bit of asparagus or something on the side give you a, yeah, nice. that veggie. Mm -hmm. yes. And what about wine? If you can do a wine pairing, just the white wine? To... Yeah, probably your best bet would be whatever you cooked with. So whatever sure. you ended up putting in the sauce, whether it was that, that Pinot or that Chablis or that Chardonnay, probably your best bet would be to serve with it. All right, well, I'm, I'm going to try it out. It looks just too good to wait any longer. Oh, yeah. Now, it's nice and crisp on the outside, I can tell. Yep, that grill's going to give you that crispy outside, and you'll get that, that nice grill flavor mm. off of it. Mm. That is <laughs> that outstanding. Good? Mm. Yeah. Yep. You got the little bite of the pulper domes, and, mm -hmm. but the sauce kind of evens it out. That is that is excellent. Yeah, that's good. You create a masterpiece, man. I think she's <laughs> going to get a, a golden fork or a golden hook in this case. <laughs> Good. So <clears throat> I'm enjoying this here, but if our viewers want to enjoy this, where do they go to get it? Um, uh, well, you can come to Island View Casino, and I'm, it's actually going to be at the Beach Boulevard Steamer, which is uh, the building across the street, from, but we are owned by Island View. And I, I don't serve this every day, unfortunately, but I do. We have uh, today's catch on the menu, which is something I change most, most mm -hmm. every day. So I will run this most often. This is probably the one I run the most office, often because it sells really well and people enjoy it, definitely. Right. I can see why. <laughs> it, it, I can see why it sells well. I can yes. see why they enjoy it. It's excellent. You did a good yeah. job. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you learned how to make black and snapper with a Bienville sauce. And I'd like to thank Chef Amanda Irwin from the Allen View Casino for showing us how it's done. Remember, you can find the recipes on our Facebook page or our webpage. Join us next time for another delicious episode of Hook It and Cook It.